something else I want to address is you are in post or you're almost done with boss level. Done. Which is, I, I, yeah. I'm so excited to see this thing. Yeah. What can you, t for people that don't know what the movie is about, uh, what can you say? I can say it's basically like, uh, you know, Groundhog Day and Die Hard uh, uh, had a child. Uh, uh, it's, uh, it, you know, listen, it's, it's kind of, you know, some of it was like source code, the Gyllenhaal thing, or like Edge of Tomorrow. It's really not because, you know, this version of the quote unquote, you know, the repeating day, like the kind of the endless death loop day, is not somebody who, oh my God, what's happening to me? It's somebody who, it's had to happen to him 140 times. So when you meet Frank Grillo's character at the beginning, he's already bored stiff with what's going on to the point where he just goes to the same restaurant every day and gets drunk and waits to get killed. And so that's kind of the point of departure for boss level. And, and I could say hand and heart and Ben has seen it. Uh, I don't think that I've done, with all due respect to the gray and all due respect to Narc and so on, I don't, I think this is the, the best film I've done. It's fantastic. Uh, because it's, it's, it's the, it is the embodiment. You know what it is? It's like, amazing. it's somewhere between the gray and smoke and aces only with no cynicism whatsoever. It's very much uh, me softening in my old age, I think. But it's, but it's, uh, I, I think it's a, Juan Miaspro, who shot El Chicano for him, shot Boss of me, our dear friend, the DP, said the best quote about it I heard about Boss It's funny as hell until it's not, and then it's even better. <laughs> so I think that's a wonderful way of looking at the film. For uh, for people that, when are people going to see this thing? Uh, What's... You know what, I'm having a big, uh, uh, two days before El Chicano opens, I'm having a huge uh, 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 first recruited screening. So I will report back <laughs> thusly uh, uh, about where we're going to be and what we're going to be doing. Uh, how I, Last time I spoke to Frank was maybe for Wheelman yeah. and other stuff. What's coming up for War Party in terms of uh, what you guys are working on? Uh, we're got, we've got... Uh, the Raid, the remake of The Raid, which we hope to We've, start very I was going to say, I've talked to you about soon. this for at least yeah. five or six days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, a lot longer than that's, that. That's going to be, yeah, they, exactly. That's going to be something that we're hopefully, we're going to be in prep in the next, in the next hopefully the next few weeks. Oh, uh, for real? This oh, is, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is yeah. actually because... Well, I mean, I, I say that and then you never know because it's it's movie making, so it's... it's Because uh, we've talked know. about this for real like three years. Sometimes it's the been, perennials don't bloom like you want them right, to. Right, exactly. You gotta, you know. uh, so, so that's the look like it's next. We have this thing called Wildfire, which is great. It's kind of a female, it's kind of female first blood, and the lead character only says one word the whole movie, which I'm pretty excited about. It's great. I won't ruin you what the word is, but she says one word. I'm gonna say fuck. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, uh, I wish. And then we, and then I did this thing. I wrote this spec called Thorn, which I'm really, really fired up about, which um, I will hopefully do right after the raid, uh, m maybe as soon as the end of the year, maybe the top of uh, 2020. With uh, the raid, uh, and then the El Chicano sequel. That's Which, right, Jim. Yeah, yeah, of course. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, with the raid, how, how you've been in, in pre-production on this, if you will, for a while. Mm -hmm. How has it changed during the process, and what is the version that you are looking forward to, for people to see? I think the version that we have, and, and again, Gareth was wonderful about kind of uh, communicating to Frank and I. Listen, I don't want you. You know, you guys do your version. I'm excited to see whatever you guys are going to do with it. And I also think that listen. You know, Smoke and Aces is not dissimilar from the raid. It came out six years earlier about guys attacking, uh, you know, a, a structure and trying to remove a guy from the penthouse. That's kind of so. I was like, this is ultimately kind of familiar territory. But I think w where we differ is, you meet Frank's character having just rotated back from a really, really brutal operation um, like Special Forces, and he's got you know, soft tissue damage in his hands and, and his rotator cuff is blown on. He's got, you know, they take fluid off of his left knee and fluid off his right knee. And the doctors basically tell him, listen, you're toying with the real, the, you're at the razor's edge of PTSD and you need three months of just nothing, R&R, &R because you're, 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 you're jacked up. And in that space, he gets the message that his brother, who he thought had been dead for four years, is actually alive and working for a very bad guy in Caracas. And in 18 hours, they're gonna kill his brother. These forces are going to descend and murder the bad guy and murder the brother. So, do you want to go and get your brother who you think who you thought is dead, and do you want that opportunity? So that's the that's the, the that's the where we start. Uh, that's an awesome start. Yeah. The my other my last thing on the raid is, and I think I've asked you this in the past, but it's it's so true. The raid. The action set pieces in that movie are so ridiculous. Mm -hmm. They're they're insane. Yeah. What they accomplished. Yeah. With 
I don't want to talk about how they accomplished it, but like, mm -hmm. it's crazy how they, what they did. They were using, literally using dead bodies in Jakarta to do some I mean, stuff. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's crazy yeah. what they did, Yeah. but there's going to be that comparison in terms of whatever you do, there's going to be a comparison to the action of that raid, the action in your yeah. movie. Yeah, we're not, I, I, when people ask me to describe what we're going to do action wise, I say, I want it, I want the entire movie to feel like the knife fight between Adam Goldberg and the German in Saving Private Ryan. Everything, like the whole, all the, all that stuff, to feel that. Because what I do think that will differ this from from the, is that there has to be in every, I think, great action film. There's always an emotional quotient that you're dealing with. There's always, you know, if if John McClane isn't walking over glass with bare feet, and you know that his wife's there, and you know he's got a daughter, you, know, you don't really care as much as you know. You really want that guy to win because you know it's at stake, sure. right? You have to have a sense of stakes, and I think. I talked about this, and, and uh, I was talking to a friend of mine. You know, for all of the the, uh, the 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 tremendous excess of those last two Matrix films, which I enjoyed the hell out of them, they never kind of got to the to the great tension of just Keanu Reeves trying to answer a phone at the end of the movie. You know what I mean? Like there was great uh, pathos. There was great kind of sense of like, oh God, he's, is he going to make it? Is he going to make it? And I think we get the spectacle of it, I think, becomes, outweighs what's really the heart and soul of it. And well, I think that's what you have to remember is that you gotta have that attached, you know. It, it's the comparison I talk about between Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. Lord of the Rings is about the end of the world. It is literally the annihilation of everything. The Hobbit is these people just wanting to get gold. Right, like, there's, yeah. there's, right. There's, <laughs> you don't, or in John Wick, you know, the, the, what happens with the dog. The rest of the movie, I am rooting for you know Keanu mm -hmm. to destroy people. Yeah, yeah, you know because you I want. care Absolutely. about what happened. And the best of those revenge kind of genre films, you have that inherent like you want it to happen because because you need this. You know, we we need that catharsis. Com completely. And it's the same thing in any like I said in any good action movie. Those right. you'll you'll find that commonality.